This is Economy Watch. What you need to know about New Zealand's economic life today. Brought to you by interest.co.nz. Kia ora and welcome to Friday's Economy Watch where we follow the economic events and trends that affect New Zealand. I'm David Chaston and this is the international edition from interest.co.nz and today we leave with news so far the sky is not falling despite the higher benchmark interest rates. First in the US, the actual number of new initial claims for jobless benefits fell to just under 175,000 last week, emphasising the continuing strength of the American labour market. True, the seasonally adjusted version rose marginally, but even so, this data has been falling since July and is almost back to the very low levels they had a year ago. It might not be news, but it is an impressive run, one that makes it much harder for the Fed to meet its inflation-fighting mandate, even if it is acing its full employment one. They also released their third and final second quarter 2023 GDP result today, confirming it rose at an annual rate of 2.1% a minor slip from the first quarter rate of 2.3%. That took their GDP on a nominal basis to $27.1 trillion in the prior year, up 5.9% from a year ago, or a gain of $1.5 trillion US dollars. Inflation accounted for $0.9 trillion of that, however. It is likely that the real inflation-adjusted expansion for the third quarter will be very much faster than the second quarter, perhaps twice as fast, with a 4.9% growth. But one American sector remains firmly in the doldrums, the residential real estate sector. Pending home sales for August fell a whopping 18.7% from a year ago, with a very sharp fall in August from July. No asset class has immunity from asset price revaluations in a rising interest rate market, and certainly housing doesn't. The Kansas City Fed's September factory survey reported slippage across the board, including for new orders, but interestingly, not for employment. In Canada, weekly earnings are rising faster, up 4.3% from a year ago. Their CPI was 4% over the same period. The earnings rise was their fastest since March 2022. And EU business sentiment was stable in September in contrast to the reversing consumer sentiment levels. Meanwhile, Germany released its September CPI data overnight, and while still high at 4.5%, this was lower than expected and sharply lower than the August 6.1% rate, and their lowest since February 2022. And global shipping container rates fell sharply last week, down 5.1% from the prior week to be 65% lower than year-ago levels. Transatlantic rates seem to have bottomed out, but again it is the outbound rates from China that are still showing the main weakness. Bulk cargo rates are still rising, however, and are back to near year-ago levels and pretty much near their long-term averages. The US Treasury 10-year yield starts today down two basis points from yesterday at 4.62%, but essentially holding its recent highs. The inverted rate curves are flattening more. And the price of gold will start today at just on $1,863 an ounce. That's down another $12 from yesterday. This is a new low since February 2023, all driven by sharply rising yields. China's gold price has risen faster than in most other global markets, but overnight it plunged lower, wiping out most of that premium it had built up. After getting as high as $95 a barrel overnight, oil prices are moving back down today, down $1.50 from this time yesterday at just under $91.50 a barrel in the US. The international Brent price is down to just on $93.50 a barrel. The surge to $100 being talked about isn't happening today, although the long-term trend is still firm. The Kiwi dollar starts today at 59.7 US cents, up a half a cent from this time yesterday. But against the Aussie, we're down almost a quarter cent to 92.9 Australian cents. Against the Euro, a little change to 56.5 Euro cents. That all means our trade-weighted index starts today at 69.6 and up 20 basis points. And the Bitcoin prices moved sharply higher today from yesterday and is now at $27,191 and up a strong 3.7% from then. Volatility over the past 24 hours has been moderate, at just on plus or minus 2.3%. You can find links to the articles mentioned today in our show notes. Get more news affecting the economy in New Zealand from interest.co.nz. Kia ora, I'm David Chaston, and we'll do this again on Monday.
Sports Center.